What's up, my guys? I'm still feeling a little, little not good, but we we gonna keep pushing on. Uh, someone wanted you to make a video about five animals or the top five animals that can live in a 40 gallon for their whole life. So let's let's just do it. I don't have any witty thing to say, so we're just gonna jump into the intro. Alright, getting into this video, we're going to be talking about number five, the corn snake. As you guys know on this channel, I recommend anything like corn snakes and king snakes for the beginner. I think they make great first pets. Uh, in all honesty, a corn snake is actually my very first pet, even before I was really into the reptile hobby, anything like that. Uh, I think I was like 13, 14 years old when I got him. Cute little dude, it was a great time. Um, they're really easy to take care of, and with only getting a, a length of around three to four-ish feet, a, a 40 gallon, which of course is going to be a 36 by 18 by 18, will be large enough to fill one for the entirety of its life. I guess the only thing I would add to this is the fact that it would pretty much be the minimum size I would go with for a corn snake. I definitely wouldn't go any lower than that. General rule of thumb for snakes, now of course this doesn't apply to anyone, but usually it's the length plus the width needs to equal or be greater greater than the total length of the snake. So if a snake gets getting four feet, goes and tied in an aquarium that is 36 inches long plus 18 inches, that is greater than four feet, therefore it'll be okay to go into it. You learn, learn some quick snake tips and we get to move on. You guys might be asking yourself, Dakota, why, why you, it seems like you're rushing really fast and what, what's going on there? Uh, my battery is literally about to die in the camera and I'm too lazy to uh, go over and charge it for an hour and then continue making this video. So I'm gonna try to make this as quickly as humanly possible. I'm also too cheap to buy a backup battery. So I like 45 bucks, dude. I don't wanna spend 45 bucks on a battery, Jesus. All right, getting down on the list, we are gonna be going over number four. It's cute, it's squishy. I think it's squishy, I don't know, I don't handle it too much. Number four, the white tree frog. Well, actually, in fact, you can house a pretty good amount of white tree frog inside a 40 gallon. Probably you can get away with anywhere from three to four white tree frogs in there. Uh, you might be asking yourself, Dakota, why choose the white tree frog? There is a multitude of different tree frogs that can fit inside a 40 gallon. Well, I like the white tree frog best. They get to a good size. Uh, they're very personal, really, they're like one of my favorite frogs to keep just because I see them out a lot. It's not like the red-eyed tree frogs where they're mostly hiding. Uh, this dude just chills out most of the time. It's hilarious watching him eat and all in all, I think white tree frog just make a great beginner frog pet. And not only that, if you put it in a 40 gallon, you can really trick that thing out. Uh, usually one frog only needs so much. It's like a 10 to 15 gallon. Obviously I have mine in that setup right there. I am thinking of upgrading, getting a few more later on, but for right now that is sufficient. So I'm making like a 40 gallon custom background pretty much whatever that tank is right there but bigger that'd be pretty rad and it's definitely something that the white tree frogs would really enjoy for the rest of their life listen man my anxiety is like at an all-time high right now because i just it's just it's flashing red the battery's like running out of time dakota better hurry up faster mr burke faster are you gonna make the video or is it gonna die halfway through i don't know we gotta keep going rolling down this list we're gonna be talking about it's not a frog it's still pretty cute. It's one of the most popular pets in the industry. Number three, the leopard gecko. Pretty self-explanatory leopard geckos. They stay pretty small. They're about this small. I don't really know the size. I don't know a whole lot. So I'm just gonna put the size right there as I do more research while I'm editing this video. Uh, leopard geckos, of course, a very popular pet, a uh, very easy beginner pet, super nice, super friendly, uh, pretty cute. Of course, if I owned one, or I said, I'd name it SpongeBob, like every other basic, basic, basic. <laughs> Like every other basic leopard gecko owning bitch! <laughs> that was dumb. They're cute. I don't know if they're snuggly, but they make great pets. And putting it in a 40 gallon would be pretty cool. You could definitely trick it out, make it almost like a cave system. Uh, definitely go bioactive, put some nice things like succulents, some other types of plants in there that, of course, low humidity. All in all, it'd be a pretty rad setup. I've seen some cool 40 gallon enclosures for leopard geckos, and you could be one of those people if you decide to get one and put it in a 40 gallon. Moving on. We coming down this list. Am I going fast enough? I don't know. Is the is the camera gonna die and I'm gonna have to have to fucking redo part of this an hour and a half later? I won't have the motivation, dude. I gotta amp myself up for these. How do you think I get this excited? A lot. You thought I was gonna say drugs, but I I, I don't do that. It's sugar. Sugar, I drink a lot of energy drinks and sugar before making these videos. I'm a craft before this thing ends. Number two! 
Tokay geckos. Okay, geckos, they're lean, they're mean, they get a good amount of size, probably somewhere around 12-ish plus inches usually. Tokay geckos are pretty fucking rad. Of course, you guys already know that. Tokay geckos are my biggest project here at DBCB Exotics. I have fallen in love with the species, and I know already what you guys are thinking. Dakota, 18 inches? Don't you think that's a, don't you think that's a little too low for a Tokay gecko? What, what, what kind of game you playing here, Dakota? We don't, I don't think that's acceptable. Well, hang on there, viewer. Let me, uh, let me explain some stuff to ya. <laughs> 18 inches is pretty low. It's probably the minimum I would go as far as Tokyo geckos for height. Of course, these being an arboreal gecko, they do appreciate a little bit more height. However, given the fact that this is a 36 inch long times 18 high, you could really utilize the uh, environment and the space that you have creating a bunch of arboreal opportunities for the lizard. It really doesn't matter how much height you have. For instance, okay, so let's take my quince monitor real quick, for example. This enclosure is five feet high. However, at the highest point, I'm only utilizing about 3.5 feet worth of room. So just because you have an enclosure that is higher, if you're of course not utilizing that space, it's not going to work out too well. And on the flip side, if you have a space that really isn't as tall, but you're utilizing it to an arboreal animal, having a bunch of vertical and horizontal places, a bunch of different levels that can go on, it can still work out, it can still be great. That's your science fact for today. Let's get to number one. Holy shit, boys and girls, I think we're gonna make it. I think I'm gonna be able to finish this before it dies. I don't know. I might have a, a fucking panic attack before this is it, because Jesus Christ, that, that red flashing camera, man, it is... Whew, it's making me anxious. Number one on the list of animals that you can keep in a 40-gallon enclosure for the entirety of its life is, of course, going to be the many dragons, the shy boys, the animal you'll never see, so you better make it into a cool enclosure because you will literally never see this animal. Number one, the crocodile skink. Now, I guess to go a little further into this, I would say probably a pair of crocodile skinks. Uh, as far as for a singular animal, it might be slightly too big, but of course, what we've been talking about this whole time, I mean, you should probably just look last one that we did, we didn't really talk about it all after that. Uh, of course, utilizing the environment that you are creating around the animal. So, crocodile skink inside a barren 40 gallon enclosure is not going to do it very well. It's gonna stress very easily, not gonna be a good time for the animal, not gonna be a good time for you. So what do you have to do in face of this? Well, fill it up, make it look nice. Make this thing into a tropical rainforest. There is a multitude of different plants, trailing, some vining, some shrubs. You can make a fucking the river waterfall type setup. I had that, didn't work very well. Wasn't doing YouTube when I did it, so you guys don't get to see that. I think it's on my Instagram somewhere if you wanna dig far enough, but that's pretty much it, man. You can make it into a really nice enclosure. They'll really love it. Uh, I got an example right here, this one is Oh no, actually, it's, it's the exoterra version of 40 ounces, 36 by 18 by 18, just as front opening doors. There you go, boys and girls. I'm getting too loud, my birds are getting annoyed. No! Fuck it, we about to wrap up anyway. I'm, I'm using my cell phone for the last couple of minutes of this. So sorry about the quality issue for the last like two minutes. So, what did you guys think? I mean, yeah, it was pretty fast. I Hopefully I made this over eight minutes so I can get that mid-roll in. If it didn't, then this was all for nothing. I'm gonna spin around while I talk. So, of course, what did you think? Were these cool? Fuck. Did you think these were this was a good good animals, or do you think I was totally wrong and you just hate me for it? E either either side, love or hate, let me know in the comment section. More the like and dislike, as always that stuff. And as always, if you like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products? You can follow me on these things right here. We also got some cool T-shirts like these things right here. You can find all that down there in the description below. Teespring, where we also have. Patreon.com slash DBCBExotics, where you get up-to-date information on all my breeding projects, new animals I have coming in, some cool pictures I take, of course, the eggs, the new babies, bunch of cute stuff going on there, cute baby geckos, amazing big boy geckos, and everything else in between. Of course, we got also cool stuff, early access to shit, discounts on, that's like a whole plethora. You don't want to hear me talk about it for 20 seconds. You can just go right down there, man. What I will tell you, young viewer and or old viewer, my demographic's actually, most of my demographic's actually older than me, which I find a bit odd. But reassuring as well. I'd rather it be a bunch of dudes in their 30s to 40s than a bunch of dudes in their 12 to 15. So thank you, people. Us millennials, we gotta stick together. Are 40 year olds still millennials? I think you guys are right on the list. I'm right on the bracket too, because I think like I just made the cut for millennial. Thank fucking God I'm not Gen Z. 
I'm sorry if I offended any of your Gen Z, Gen Z's. Why do you eat Tide Pods? You know, I'll apologize when you, when you guys have an explanation for that, because Jesus Christ. Roll the outro.